Vampire bats are small tropical bats native to Central and South America. For food, they drink blood, and nothing but blood. They don't even drink water. Now blood is a poor food for a mammal, and it's hard to get. And after only three nights without a successful hunt, a vampire bat will starve to death. But female vampire bats have a social safety net, a complex social network of relationships that they develop over their long lifespans. And these bats can live to be more than 30 years old. When a hungry female returns to her roost, other bats, sometimes close relatives, and sometimes non-relatives, will regurgitate their own blood meals to feed her. This food sharing behavior was discovered by a biologist named Jerry Wilkinson. Over the last three decades, his study of vampire bed food sharing has become an iconic textbook example of animal cooperation. But there's a controversy about why vampire bats share food with non-relatives. Many scientists are interested in what makes cooperation evolutionarily stable over time. To understand what this means, consider the following example. Imagine a number of bats that are more selfish. They take food when they are hungry, but never feed other bats, only their own offspring. What would happen? Over evolutionary time, these selfish bats would outbreed the altruistic donating bats. But in actuality, most of the female vampire bats act as donors and help their hungry roostmates. So in other words, why did the donating bats actually do better throughout evolutionary history? One possibility is that the bats mainly share their food with relatives, which makes the behavior self-perpetuating. But another possibility is that the bats actively prevent cheating by keeping track of which group members previously helped them as a way of deciding which group members they would help in return. Wilkinson and others argued that the vampire bats might be using both genetic relatedness and their past social experience to inform their helping decisions. Like humans and many other primates, vampire bats have social relationships. They groom each other, follow each other, and help feed each other. This social complexity may explain the fact that vampire bats have enormous brains for bats. In particular, they have a huge neocortex relative to their ancestors. That's the same part of the brain that's so large in humans. In fact, the relative size of the neocortex predicts the social complexity of a given species of primate. So why do vampires help each other? The idea that food sharing is based on something like friendship or fairness, and not just on helping relatives, is very controversial. Yet no one has done any real behavioral experiments to figure out what's really going on. With your support, we will test how the bats decide who to help and when to help. This will give us insight into whether other distantly related species have complex social bonds held together by mutually beneficial relationships and whether negotiating and navigating a complex social world has shaped the minds of these bats, just as it's shaped the mind of our own species.